Wow. <laughs> that is insane. 172. And some of those went all the way into the pond, I think. What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and today I have a very special blaster to review and show off to you guys, and that is the Microburst by Timmy. And let me tell you, this is a pretty sweet little shotgun pistol slash, yes, this could also be untermounted as a master key, which I think is pretty darn sweet, and we will check out that form as well but this is in pistol form right now i was loaned this by my good friend tj so thanks tj i appreciate it and uh he built this and printed it himself and i think he did an awesome job with it really nice protopasta filament one of my favorites so yeah really really nice blaster but very expensive blaster and that is probably why you haven't seen too many of these floating around because these internals by themselves they're like $300 just for the major parts that go inside this thing. So yeah, pretty darn expensive, but we got something special to show you guys today. So let's check this baby out. So if you're not aware, this is powered by a CO2 cartridge. This is an airsoft cartridge. This is a 33 gram version. You can buy a smaller version and use it with that, but you won't get as many shots out of it. So that's kind of uh, user preference there, but pretty darn cool. We do have a PSI meter down here so we can adjust that to obviously shoot harder or softer depending on what you're using it for or what you want to get out of the blaster. Um, and I'm assuming if you turn that baby down, you'll get more shots. So that's pretty cool. This thing is set a little over 120 PSI right now. So yeah, it's got some pop, uh, but you can uh, adjust that by this little button down here. This whole blaster is basically held in by pins, which is pretty darn sweet. I really like how Timmy does his blasters. He makes awesome, awesome work. Really like the Hummingbird, and I have to finish mine, but nevertheless, this thing is pretty cool how it's just held in by pins. I did lose one of them because this hole is a little loose, but uh, the two that are holding this Picatinny rail grip in is just fine, but we can pop that off, actually. As simple as that and now we can take this and undermount it on a blaster and it's as simple as that so that's pretty darn cool now I will say the biggest downside for me for this blaster besides the cost obviously uh, but that is what it is is the weight of this thing it is very heavy and so when you use it in this fashion especially it makes the blaster very front heavy. So keep that in mind if you plan on picking one up, but uh, yeah, this is uh, still pretty darn sweet. So as long as you use two hands, it's not too, too terrible. And it kind of gives you a good way to hit the trigger, at least in this form with this blaster. So I really do like it with the Strife, at least with the, it does have to mount on Picatinny rail. So you would have to have some sort of kit like this or some sort of 3D printed part that gives you some Picatinny rail. And you probably want a pretty long piece of it because, because of that weight, but uh, that seems to work just fine. So that's pretty darn sweet. So when using it in pistol form, this grip is actually very comfortable. It's very simple design. I really like how he did that a lot, but it is very, very comfortable, but yet, still very front heavy even in this form uh, we do have a button up here a lever on both sides and that will eject your cartridge and allow you to load another one so this does use the spring thunder shell so you have a wide variety of different kinds of shots uh, in terms of you know a single elite you could do a single half length in here you could do two half lengths you can do the double elite or four half links in that guy right there so that's pretty sweet he also printed the rival i guess buckshot uh, however you want to refer to this guy uh, and you can put up to three i think rival rounds in there so that's pretty darn sweet i think there's quite a variety of different shells you can print out which is pretty cool and since those are on thingiverse you can if you have a 3d printer you can print as many of those as you want so that's 
pretty darn awesome. But that just loads right in there and then you just shut this guy and you're ready to go. So really, really cool. You know what? Let's go ahead, take this baby outside and see what it's all about. All right, you guys, so went ahead and threaded that on there. We are ready to go now. We are over 100 and probably around 130 PSI there. So should have quite a bit of power. We will get some chronograph readings. We will do just a straight firing demo shooting at Zombie Strike Man. Uh, I'm not sure how these shotgun shots are going to go over the chronograph, but we will get some singled shots over there and, and see how that does for sure. But yeah, let's just shoot this thing off, see what it's got. 152, and that thing came out all kinds of crazy. Grab another one out of my tool bag here. What do we got here? I think these might be uh, two Dart Zone Pro darts. That was a single Dart Zone Pro dart we just shot off. We'll see if this one reads and how it does. Ooh, pretty wide spread there. Uh, 141 is what it read. I don't know how accurate that is given that two darts went across it, but let's do a rival. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. 172. And some of those went all the way into the pond, I think. Wow, that's insane. Quite a spread there, quite a spread. I think I have two uh, Nexus Pro darts, I guess we'll call them, full lengths in here. We'll see how that does. Oh no, those were four half lengths. <laughs> that was crazy. Single rival, that should be interesting. Single rival, here we go. 190 from a single rival round. Wow. Uh, Adventure Force Waffles. This will be interesting to see how two of these do because they are a tight squeeze in there. We will see though. Yeah, not great out of that, but uh, you know, 136, that, that was that one went real short. They're just too tight, I think, for the waffle heads. I think we got two half links in here. The Nexus Pro darts. Whew. Says 138. I'm not sure if that read or not, but a little sticky there. We got two half links side by side here, so this will be interesting how this does. These are the Nexus Pro half links. Wow. Those went all the way to the pond. That was impressive. That worked really well. I like that one. I think we got two rival rounds in here. Let's see how just a double rival shot does. That was 172, by the way. Wow, that was actually pretty darn good. Uh, two rival rounds, very nice, 157. Triple rival again. So I'm actually gonna try to hit Zombie Strike Man this time and see if we can do so. Well, one went flying way over his head. So if he was a little taller, it would have hit him. And then one rolled to his feet. So, you know, pretty crazy spreads we get here. But uh, let me tell you, this is pretty, pretty fun. We'll try a single Adventure Force waffle here. See how that does. Yeah, it doesn't like the waffle darts. And those just kind of, I think that one blew up. It was so, so much power. I don't know if this is a single pro bamboo dart or two half links, but we will find out. Too much power for those. It does not seem to do well with the single darts as well, especially the full links. A couple more rivals. I think this might be a double, double or triple, I'm not sure. Yep, that was a triple. Man, I really like the rival. The rival is awesome. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm gonna have to pick up some of those and reload these because this is just way too much fun. All right, we got some single half link darts loaded up, the Nexus Pro half links and we'll see how they do from maximum effort here to get some maximum numbers on the chronograph. Uh, let's just see what it does. Try to hit Zombie Strike Man too. 204. That one just exploded. <laughs> 
217. It's really just too much power uh, to this dart, even the half lengths, even real high quality ones. 219, wow, that's crazy. Needs more barrel length for that kind of power. All right, I think my favorite are the rival rounds, so we'll try some more of those. They seem to be very effective. Wow, wow. <laughs> I think uh, Zombie Strike Man needs to be a little closer for me to be able to hit him with that spread, but still pretty darn awesome. <laughs> this is so much fun. I love shotguns. You guys, shotguns are just the best. <laughs> All right, we have four half links in here. Let's see how that does. Oh, there were just two half links in there. Or maybe there are two, maybe that was just two elites or two uh, full links anyways. Uh, but man, you guys, I think I'm gonna have to continue to play with this thing. We should get a few more shots out of this cartridge. So, but let's go back inside and I'll give you my final thoughts on this really, really fun shotgun pistol or master key. All right, you guys, so obviously the microburst is a pretty darn awesome blaster. I mean, Timmy did an awesome job designing this. I think it's a really cool pistol, but even better master key. I think this would be the ultimate master key if you got to choose one. I mean, really, really cool. I wish it was a little lighter. Uh, that's really the major downside besides obviously the cost, but the cost is the cost. I mean, you, the internals cost what they cost and that's what it is. Um, but that's what allows it to be so cool that you have a, you know, basically an automatic shotgun. You don't have to prime this or anything. That's, that's really, really cool. Um, now the PSI levels probably could come down a little bit to be a little more effective. Uh, and you know, give you more shots and whatnot so uh but it is really fun to shoot this thing off at a high F, at a high P, psi level because that gives you the ultimate fps obviously but uh those rival rounds did pretty well but that was a pretty wide spread and you're probably not even going to hit your target if they're you know not too close to you and if they're that close to you why not just shoot them at lower psi but nevertheless really fun for the video to shoot it off that hard uh, but yeah, if I was using this practically, I'd probably turn that down. Overall, I think this is a pretty sweet thing. I mean, I hope to own one at some point. Uh, the only thing really holding me back is this kind of blaster isn't really allowed to be used too many places I play. Um, there is one club that I play with in Cincinnati that would allow something like this because they play in an indoor, uh, actually airsoft arena. But most Nerf clubs don't allow like HPA and things like that and it's just not allowed in public parks and stuff like that so um, that's just the law actually so uh, anyways uh, pretty darn sweet um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little overview slash review of the micro burst if you're interested in buying one of these or building one, one yourself I'll put a link in the description to where you can find uh, the files or the actual blaster built for you um, I don't know the name of his store in Etsy Ansul Gulges or something like that. I don't know how you pronounce that, but that's what it's called. I will link it in the description box. But Timmy, you did an awesome job on this blaster. Cannot wait to get my hummingbird together. I've just been slammed. It's all dry fitted right here, sneak peek. Uh, but <laughs> I do need to get those internals wired up and uh, we should be good to go. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button. It greatly helps out the channel. Think about subscribing if you're not subscribed. Ring the bell for notifications so you can be alerted when I post a video. And as always, guys, peace out.